right here. I'm gonna have to go to the right. There you go. One more. Go ahead. Come under. Right in the corner here, gang. Uh, do that. Just stop, uh, gang. Uh, yeah. Come on, Richard. Take your time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a sea bass. Nice sea bass. Nice sea bass. Oh, wow. Yeah. There you go. Nice fish. Hi, I'm Dan Hernandez. I could welcome you to this week's episode of Sport Fishing. Today, we're fishing with Pacific Dawn up here in the Ventura area, yeah. like Santa Rosa Island right now. And Richard just got this beautiful white sea bass. Hey! So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. Welcome to Sport Fishing with Dan Hernandez. This week's episode of Sport Fishing is brought to you by Bradley Smokers, when you only want the very best. Magic Metal Jigs and Bucktail Jigs. By Game Saver. Preserve your fish, use a Game Saver. And by Dan Hernandez Dipping Sauces and Fish Batter. Rockfish. Oh, he ate another fish. <laughs> Legally catch three fish at one time. Uh, my name is Pat Cavanaugh. I own the Pacific Dawn charter boat out of uh, Ventura Harbor and in San Diego. Um, right now we're at Santa Rosa Island on a uh, overnight trip. We uh, spent the morning fishing for sea bass and halibut. It was a little bit slow. We had one sea bass and uh, saw a pretty good sign, but weren't able to catch anything else. And at the moment, we're heading up to San Miguel Island to try to fish rockfish. Rock fishing's been really good up there, so we take a little extra time to, uh, to uh, get up there to make sure we got good quality and good fishing up there. So, One of the things that uh, is a benefit from fishing the Channel Islands, is, uh, especially on these overnight trips, is uh, we're, a lot, we're able to fish sea bass, halibut, that sort of thing in the morning. We can spend, uh, and if it's good fishing, we'll spend better than half the day doing that. And, um, We've always got rock fishing as sort of a, either, either a fallback or a bailout, or if, if the, the sea bass and the halibut aren't biting, we've always got that to fall back on. So it's, it's kind of a nice thing. Well, the rock fishing out here is outstanding. Santa Rosa, San Miguel, San Nicolas, these islands have some of the best habitat for rock fish anywhere on the coast. And we have, we have great fishing up here for rock fishing. When we're uh, sea bass fishing, there's two, two basic methods that we do most of the time. Number one would be dropper loop fishing um, with live or fresh dead squid. And number two would be fishing with a lead head. And uh, they're both equally productive. Guys always end up with a nice day of fishing regardless of what's going on. And uh, that's one of the big benefits of fishing up here. This week's boat bio is brought to you by Magic Metal Jigs and B-52 Bucktail Jigs. The Pacific Dawn's a large sport fisher 
that operates during the spring and fall months up in the Channel Islands area. During the summer, you find her offshore in San Diego chasing tuna. And up in the wheelhouse, you find all the modern electronics for fish finding, navigation, and communications. Down in the galley, full service galley with all hot meals, great service there. Down below, the boat has spacious bunks, plenty of room for anglers to lay out and relax. The Pacific Dawn's an awesome boat run by skipper Pat Cavanaugh. Book a trip with them today. Well, skipper just made a long move. We went from Santa Rosa Island to San Miguel, and now we're bottom fishing. And uh, you see the gear I'm using here. Got a torque reel, an ugly stick custom Dan Hernandez rod, and fishing on the bottom with uh, two B52 bucktails. And I got a nice fish going here. Let's see what I got. Looks like Larry's bit too. <laughs> I'm just fishing down there, all the way in the bottom. And that's why lots of people love to come to the Channel Islands. There's always great rock fishing here. And if you can time it right, you can get into the white sea bass and the halibut too. Here it comes right here. Nice red. It's a red snapper. That's what we're trying to catch. And this is the, yeah. Hey, this is our skipper, Pat. Nice how, deep, how deep are we in here? 190 feet. 190 feet. It'll be a mixed bag, reds, johnnies, chuckleheads, blue bass, a little bit of everything, but the quality of the fishing's been good up here. That's why we came this far. San Miguel white fish. Nice four and a half, five pound white fish. Ooh, nice red. I was showing that jig you got that on. It's just an old old Jack's jig. Yeah. It's rock fish. That tastes delicious. They're great. Mm -hmm. That's what they call them. Put cool. your number down and give this one to you. Good, 19, I'll eat them. You got it. And what we're going to do with that fish, we'll take a little break from the action. We're going to go to the galley and show you how to cook up a red snapper like that. This week, the galley is brought to you by Dan Hernandez Dipping Sauces and Fish Batters. Look for them in your local supermarkets. This week in the galley, I want to talk to you a little bit about what you can do with your smoked fish. I get people ask me all the time, how do you smoke fish? And we've done, you know, cooking segments on that. It's very simple as smoked fish. It's all about the process and the equipment that you use. That's why we use the Bradley Smoker System. It's really easy to use, doesn't matter if you're doing a small piece of fish or tons of fish from a long trip. And that's what we have here. We use our Bradley smoker. We have some rock fish that we caught in today's episode and we smoked it. And what I'm gonna do is just show you a different way you can use it. There's all kinds of way to use your smoked fish. You don't have to just eat it straight like this, which is fine, but you can use it lots of other ways. And one of the recipes that I like to use is in my cookbook. It's a dip that I like to use. Now in the cookbook, it talks about making the spread with smoked salmon, but today we're doing it with rockfish. And I've done this in the past, it works really good. There's tons of different recipes of dishes you can do to cook fish, but especially in the back of the book, we have a whole section on smoking fish and what to do with your fish once it is smoked. Okay, so an easy recipe to do is this. You just take the rockfish, and what we do is add all these different ingredients. What we have here is our rockfish. We have relish, celery, parsley, we have some garlic, Dijon mustard, red onions, and mayonnaise. So you start off with the mayonnaise, and you want to have a little over a cup of mayonnaise, put it into a bowl, 
And what's cool about this is your fish is already cooked. So all we're doing is just making the mix. So we got the mayonnaise, put in the onions. Going to add our Dijon mustard. Start mixing this up. And then as I mix this, I can put in my garlic. Don't have a whole lot of garlic, but you know, you can add more if you like it, that flavor. And you can just see how it's changing colors here a little bit. Add our celery. Relish. And you can add more relish if you like. I just have two tablespoons right here. I'm going to start adding some fish to this. It's really important that you start getting all of this other stuff done first, getting the mayonnaise going, get all the ingredients in there. And I'm going to add the parsley last because I like to have that green color really good. So what's neat about this is if you have a mixture of fish, like all this fish I have here is a little bit of a mix of different rockfish, salmon grouper, whitefish, just a mix of fish. But you can use it all you know, with a dish like this. It's really easy to do. Got a pound of, of rockfish here. And then all I'm going to do is just mix this up. Okay, now we're getting the consistency of what we want that fish to look like in the spread. So right now I'm just going to take the parsley, mix that in. So that's a little bit more color to it, gives it a little bit more taste. Looks really nice. So that's about it right there. It's perfect. And then all you're going to do at this point is put it in the refrigerator. You put it in the refrigerator, put it in there for at least two hours. It's going to break it down even more. And it's going to get really good for a spread. And I use this lots of times over the holiday season and even the summertime for a spread. It's really easy. Put some chips around it. It's just very simple. Again, all you're going to do at this point is just take this, throw it in the refrigerator, let it chill for two hours, and it's good to go. I mean, it's good enough to eat now. It tastes even better once you put it in the spread. For more ideas of what to do with your fish, you know, how to prepare it, smoke it, you know, how to cook it up and, and all that. We have it all in our cookbook. You can find it right here in my cookbook. We have it in some of the tackle stores. You can also find it on my website. Plenty of information there. And remember, the whole key to smoking fish is the process in which you do it. Having the right brine, having the right smoker, using the right chips. And with the Bradley smoker system, it's very easy to do. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. have a gulp bait on it, one's a squid, one's a jerk bait. Richard had that big salmon grouper that was holding on to a blue bass. I've never seen that with the salmon grouper. No, I never I haven't seen the salmon grouper grab on the Oh yeah, it's shaking. No on the yeah, that was the first time I seen that. There it is. There's deep color. Double. <laughs> Too nice but Yeah. <laughs> And you see what these fish ate. We have a little B-52 half ounce bucktail with a gulp bait 
and both of these rockfish just love them. Two good quality fish. All right, well, we're going to thanks. We're going to take a little break from the action, go to the tackle box, give you a good look at the fishing tackle that we're using for today's type of fishing. This week, the tackle box is brought to you by Cabela's, America's foremost outfitter. This week in the Tackle Box, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing today. We're over at the Channel Islands going for some quality rockfish. Now, in that deeper water, 300 feet, 320 feet, you want to go with the bigger reel. This is an old school size 4.0 reel with Dacron line. No high tech line here, just the old school Dacron that we used to use years ago. It works great for this type of fishing. You want to use a 4.0 size so you have plenty of line so you get down to that 300 foot mark. And if you have a little current, you got to leave line out there to scope out but this will hold plenty of line for that and the reason we go with the dacron or the braided lines is they don't stretch you don't want any stretch at all when you're rock cod fishing or rock fishing because you're going to be fishing so deep that monofilament it's just like a big rubber band you'll never feel the bite never set the hook with monofilament with the braided line or the dacron line like this you have no problem works out good we have one of my dan hernandez rods and this outfit is rated for 30, 40 pound test. 40 pound test is perfect for this type of gear. If you're gonna get into the shallow water, if the skipper decides later in the day to slide into water, say 100, 150 feet deep, you can go with a lighter reel, a smaller reel, but again, I got braided line on here. And then on top of it, I have some top shots, some monofilament, so I could tie on a jig, and you use this little bit of monofilament as a shock absorber because this Dacron or this braided line isn't going to stretch at all. So you need a little bit of shop absorber in there. And that's what the monofilament will do for us. Now, the way I like to fish is when we're fishing where there's enough, you know, not that much current and you can get your line all the way to the bottom, you can get down with six ounces. I like to use something like this, a B-52 bucktail. You can put on strips of squid, anchovy, sardines work good. What we found out a lot on this trip was using big old sluggos like this. The reds just loved them. And all I did was take the sluggo, slide it right on to the bucktail, B-52 bucktail, and it would just dangle like this. And you could fish it on the smaller outfit if you're in the shallow water, and the deep water with the bigger outfit. Let that go all the way to the bottom, bounce off the bottom, jerk it a little bit, wind it up, and then let it fall again. And I found as the lure was falling down to the bottom, big reds love this. This is the number one way that we've been catching reds lately is with a big plastic tailor like this. It works great. B-52 bucktails are a great bait to use for this type of fishing. Come in a variety of colors. Two colors I would use would be chrome, lots of lingcod in the area, glow in the dark. When you're fishing anywhere over 100 feet of water, the glow in the dark works really good. And if you're not sure what they look like in your local store, this is the packaging. You can ask for them at your store. If you can't find them there, please go to our website. We have them all there. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Catch it. Yes, sir. And that's a B52 bucktail there with a gulp bait on there. Let's see this right here. And that's the gulp bait right there. All right, well, we're going to take a little break from the action. When we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. This week's tip of the week is brought to you by Magic Metal Jigs and Bucktail Jigs. For this week's tip of the week, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing out here rock fishing. Now we're using different types of rigs. People were using two hook canyons. I was fishing a bucktail. Also fishing with a magic metal jig with a small B-52 up on top of it, another bucktail. But with the bucktails, you want to make sure you have a strip of bait on there. You can use like cut squid or sardines will work, but a great bait to use is gulp. And Gulp come in all kinds of different shapes, different sizes. 
But this is what I like to do. I like to get one of the larger containers like this with the gulp. And then as I use them for different situations, you'll see in here I have jerk baits. I have shrimps. I have squids. I have just a big selection of different gulps in here. Even some of the strip baits of the gulp I have in here. And I, I keep this with me when we go rock fishing. So what I want is just a, I want to make sure I have a good gulp bait on there, but it doesn't necessarily matter what shape or what style it is. When I'm fishing deep like that, I just want to make sure I have a piece of gulp on there. So when the fish strike it at 100, 150 feet, they just taste that gulp and they hold on. It gives me enough time to set the hook. So that's this week's tip of the week. Get all your gulp, mix it up in one container, and you get all that working for you. Well, I want to thank the crew for the Pacific Dawn, Pat. He's, he's a great guy. I've fished with him many times in the past. It's been years since I've been back out on the water with him. It's great to be out here on his own boat now. First met him, he was just a kid. Now he's got two kids of his own. Has a great operation, Pacific Dawn. All the crew, the deckhands, Mike, all the guys have been really great for us. The cook, it's been lots of fun. Well, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing.